that you would create within us a clean heart, renew within us the right spirit, God, that we may be able to receive something from you. Now, God, I pray that your anointing will fall fresh in this place. Consecrate every heart, every mind. God, open us up that we may be able to receive and understand and know, God, that you are God all by yourself. Now we uplift and magnify your name. And we pray that you would let this service be that that you would have it to be. Father, have a Holy Ghost take over in this place that your presence can be felt, that your glory can be felt, and we'll give you all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Listen, this is another month. Amen. Another chance that we get to come into this place and tell God thank you for all of the wonderful things that he's done for us. Listen, hadn't God been good? Oh, y'all can do better than that. Y'all got some things you can tell God thank you for. For it could have been us. 
but he saw fit and blessed us in spite of. All right, we're going to keep climbing and keep going higher. Listen, we're going to turn it over to our choir, who's going to take us higher from here.
Lord have mercy. God has been so good to me that I cannot tell it all. Amen. Listen, I don't think I got pen and paper long enough that can last long enough to tell of all of the good things that God has done for me. Amen. Thank you, choir, for reminding us that God has been so good to us. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements that we want to get out uh, on today. First of all, I'm asking uh, personally that y'all would pray for me. Amen. Uh, that little person right there who uh, has been at Grandma's house for the longest. He started school with the beginning of the school year. Y'all know how that happens. When he started school, the germ said, oh, it's a new fella in the classroom. So now he's 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 he he's being attacked every day, seem like, but but now his parents getting attacked. <laughs> so I ask that y'all would pray. Uh, I'm pumped up with all kind of vitamins right now. So amen. But we're gonna make it through this Sunday, and I just solicit your prayers, but not only for me. Uh, I pray, I pray sincerely, uh, first of all, for the Glenn family. Uh, for our very own brother Stanley Glenn, whose mother has gone on home to be with the Lord. And we are uh, soliciting your thoughts and your prayers. But listen, uh, one thing is for certain that I'm glad about is uh, Brother Glenn knows who the Lord is. Amen. And we thank God for him. He could actually be home. He could be at home, but he's here. And that is a testament of how he believes and knows who God is, amen, and what God is able to do. Be, uh, able to do. The services for, uh, and the memorial service for his mother will be here on at the church on next Sunday. Next Sunday, this memorial service at the 2 o'clock hour, 2 p.m., right here at church. So those that can, those that will, please, please uh, be here. Let's help support and celebrate the homegoing service, memorial service for uh, to Mother Glenn that has gone on home to be with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Um, also, let us continue to pray for our church family, all of our known sick and shut in. Uh, we also continue, we ask for prayers for Mother Pearson. Uh, continue to keep her lifted. She had a fall not too long ago, but we are lifting her up that God can uh, heal and restore uh, as he's always been doing. Amen. So we're keeping her lifted as well as all of our mothers. We thank God. Thank God for y'all being in the house this morning. Amen. 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 It is always good to see you all on Sunday morning. Uh, also, um, Pastor McNeely, he was here last Sunday. I'm not sure if he's in route this Sunday. Uh, however, he was here on last Sunday and he mentioned uh, some words. He gave us some words and he mentioned about a meeting a meeting to be held to discuss uh, the ongoing, the furtherance of the church and some things that are on his heart and mind. That meeting has been set. So I want you all to save the date and we will get uh, even more announcements out as the weeks go by. This will be a special meeting called by Pastor McNeely. This meeting will be Saturday, Saturday, December 3rd at 1 p.m. Saturday, December 3rd at 1 p.m. Why are we having it on a Saturday? Why not on normal Mondays? Well, the time has changed. Amen. It gets dark sooner. As well as we want to afford our mothers. Amen. An opportunity to be at these meetings. At 1 p.m. during the day, I think is a good time for them to get out. Those that drive, they can get out, get here, and then get back home safely. Amen. Amen. So we want, as well as others, we want to make sure that we extend, extend that opportunity for everybody to be here for this call meeting of our Pastor McNeely Saturday, December 3rd at 1 p.m. So please let us do everything we can to uh, be here. Those that care about your church and want to see what's happening with your church, we encourage you. We encourage you to be here. Now, if you're not here and, and things happen or whatever is said, you can't get mad. If you're not here, you should have been here. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Um, 
We are uh, in our holiday cheer months, uh, November and December, and this month we always, we always do Thanksgiving something for, uh, at least we know we do it for our mothers, and this year will be no different. So I believe that we came up with monetary so this year, this year, we're going to do monetary gifts. We're going to do gift cards. Uh, we understand that there are certain items that people like to buy. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all got some name brands. Y'all only buy just the same. Amen. So with that, we want to be more flexible and more feasible, and we want to provide gift cards for our, uh, at least all of our mothers, and then those that others that we can, we will. Uh, but we want to do that. So starting today, starting today, we will begin accepting those monetary donations to help with those gift cards so that we can be a blessing to anybody that we possibly can. Amen? Amen. 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 So during our opportunity period, we'll have those uh, dedicated baskets as well as our tithe and offering so that we can start uh, being a blessing and preparing for uh, the weeks to come. All right. Uh, and... One other, mothers, 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 listen. I need to meet with y'all immediately following service. That's all right. I want to meet with y'all immediately following service. So please, please just stay where you are. I'm going to come to you. And I want to talk to y'all about some things. Uh, and, and so this is some prayers. Amen. Amen. So I'll get with you immediately following service. And then finally, Finally, we are in a new month. We are in a new month. We are in November, and y'all know each month we like to celebrate birthdays. Amen. Are there any birthday celebrations for the month of November? I know a couple. I know a few right now. Amen. Amen. Look, look, hands are popping. All right. All right. So uh, I'm going to come on that road last. Hold on. Uh, so I know... Uh, uh, she's not here, Sister Sister Torres, Bridget Torres, celebrated on the first already. Amen. So we say happy birthday to her. Uh, my daughter, oldest daughter, Corey, celebrates a birthday, I believe, this week. Amen. Uh, Mama, she celebrates a birthday coming up as well very soon. We're going to be celebrating her at the house. Amen. Uh, November is full. And then... Then on our mother's row, amen. It is a blessing when we get to celebrate birthdays on our mother. So, 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 how old would you be? 83 years young. Amen. 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 Then we got one more mother people. She already pulled me to the side. She said, listen, I might not see you, but I'm going to go and tell you my birthday is this month. And she will be celebrating 92 years young this month. Amen. Thank God for blessing and keeping them and holding them so that they can keep fighting a good fight. Amen. They are a true testament of what God is able to do. So y'all, if y'all, if y'all want to know what prayer does, that's what prayer does. It allows you to see years in the 90s. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to each and every one of you that are celebrating birthdays this month. We celebrate with you. We pray for you and pray that God keeps you as you journey into the next this next time around the sun for you. All right. Are, are there any uh hold on. Are there any anniversaries? Amen. That we celebrate this month. I know of one. The Glenn celebrated six years, is that correct? Six years of marital and excitement and love and kindness. And so we say happy anniversary to uh, Sister Naira and Brother Stanley Glenn who celebrated an anniversary. Uh, was it this week? I think it was this week. Yeah, this week. Amen. Amen. So happy anniversary to y'all just the same. All right, uh, I don't think I have any others at this time. Uh, any other announcements we could? Uh, I have a prayer before I have a new work anniversary. I saw a new job on November the 28th. <laughs> amen, amen. We, listen, we, we celebrate.
celebrate all the couples been around here because y'all don't know God is good. Amen. So we celebrate with you and your new accomplishment. And then she raises her hand. Sister, Sister Glenn also received a grand promotion of her job. Amen. Amen. Y'all don't understand, when God does something for y'all, it's a testament of just the faith that you have in God. And we celebrate and we love each and every one of you. And we worship God for all of the things that he has done in all of your lives. Amen. Amen. All right. That means Gabby going to be singing a song for us soon. All right. Um, choir, amen. We're back in your hands.
thank you, choir, Amen. for blessing us. Y'all give my choir and clap and praise for the name of Jesus because they sung their hearts out this morning. Amen. Bless every attentive ear. Blot out any distractions that may be there, God, that we may be able to receive a word from you. Now have thine own way like only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Luke, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. We'll be reading from the NIV version. Starting at verse number 14, I'll read a few scriptures uh, from this, but that's all right. Some of y'all probably ain't read this week, so we're going to get our reading in today. <laughs> Amen. Luke, very familiar story, 22nd chapter, verses 14. Start at verse 14, and it reads as follows. It says, after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this 
in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The son of man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Amen. Listen, that is verses 14 and 21 of the 22nd chapter of Luke. If you don't mind, allow me to use just for a thought or a subject, a seat at the table. A seat at the table. Amen. We, we have now entered into the month of the year where table and food will be on our hearts and minds for the next 30 days or so. Matter of fact, there are some folk who can't wait for this one to get here because they know that it is a time of feasting and fellowship. As a matter of fact, I probably shouldn't even have done this sermon today right now because somebody's mind has already gone to the turkey and the mashed potatoes and the yams and the greens and all of that stuff because this is a month where everybody gets a pass. You, you can undo your pants, you can take your belt off, and sit around the table with your family and do as you please. But, but, but I began to think as, as this Sunday was approaching that as we're thinking about the table and we're thinking about eating, that on this first Sunday, what an appropriate day to talk about the Lord's table. For not only do we have the tables in which we sit for the idea of thanksgiving, but we often sit at tables every day of our lives. But as believers and Christians, and even those who may not have a belief in Christ at this moment, you need to know that right now there's an invitation that the Lord has given you to dine at this table. But as we think about the Lord's table, I, I, I did want to let you know up front, I want to let you know up front that if you choose to dine at the Lord's table, it does cost you something. It does cost you something to eat at the table. The reason I bring that up is because there are some folk, and, and I know it ain't nobody in here, don't worry about it, but there are some folk that y'all know that, that, that there are some relatives that y'all have that, that, that they eat at everybody's table but don't contribute nothing. Hey, see, some of y'all finished that. Y'all already knew, y'all. That don't contribute nothing. But listen, listen, don't look at them, don't call no names because they might slip up and call yours too. But, but, but there are some times we sit at a table but we bring nothing to it. But I want us to understand that the table in which the Lord calls us to, that there is always a cost. Always a cost. And so, so here in Luke the 22nd chapter, we find Jesus in his last week of his life. In chapter 22 of Luke describes for us what happens as Jesus brings all of the disciples together so that they may take and participate in the idea of the Passover or so he calls it the day of unleavened bread. And so here in this chapter 22, Luke tells us that Jesus sends two of his apostles to go and find a place for them to have this meal. They go, they follow Jesus' instructions, and they find this upper room, a place where they might go and have supper together. Listen, Luke tells us 
Way back in verse number 7, if you read back up, that it came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And we, we must understand that this is, this happened on a Thursday. It was a Thursday of the week that Jesus was to be crucified. And what makes it significant that on this particular day when they are coming to take the Passover meal, this is the day in which they would traditionally do the Passover. They would kill the lamb, prepare the lamb to be eaten. So, so here it is that Jesus is following this symbolism. He submits himself on the same day of the Passover lamb that is to be brought in. The text says in verse 14 that the hour was come when he sat with his 12 apostles. 12, 12 apostles. He, what, what, what we have to understand that is when he would be preparing the way. They would be preparing the lamb then, but he would be preparing the way because when they were preparing the lamb, they would kill the lamb, but they wouldn't eat the lamb until later on that evening. And that's why it's even significant when Luke is writing. He points out the fact that it was in the evening when Jesus sat with the 12 disciples at the table as he prepared for his departure. Now, I get it. I know that we of us have heard this story before maybe some have not heard this story before but I want to give it to you so you can understand what takes place when we talk about our first Sundays and we have this the, the, the text says that he sits down with them and he tells them I've been longing to have this moment with you and, and, and he said I wanted to do it before I suffer text says that he takes the cup. Thank God for the cup. He divides it amongst them and tells them, we won't do this again until we get into the kingdom. Then he takes the bread, he breaks it, passes it to them, gives thanks and says, this is my body which is given for you. And then he takes a second cup. Now, I don't want you to get confused. I don't want you to think that there was a misprint, but, but he takes a second cup. And I found out that the original observance of the Passover meal, there were actually four cups. But it only talks about two. And he says here, he says, Luke tells us about two of these cups. And, and he says, this is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But he says, while we're eating, the person who's going to betray me is right here at the table. And the text says that he continues to talk amongst the disciples and they begin to talk amongst themselves wondering, is it me? Is it I? Am I the one who's going to do it? And then that conversation turned in the same breath from is it me to who is the great? And so, just for a moment, as we look at this text, I just want to talk about what happens at the Lord's table. People say, I want a seat at the Lord's table, but let's talk about, uh, let's talk about that seat at the Lord's table. First thing I want you to recognize is that at the Lord's table, sacrifice is required. Lord have mercy, I know that. Y'all don't like that word sacrifice, but sacrifice is required. Anyone who is going to sit at the Lord's table must make a sacrifice. Let, let's think about this. Jesus is at the table with 12 disciples. All 12 of the apostles are sitting around him as they observe this feast of the unleavened bread and it says that each of them who have come to the table have made a sacrifice in some form or fashion. You don't believe me? Listen, I want you to remember this. It was over three and a half years ago during this time that Jesus began to walk the streets. He began to call unto him the twelve who would follow him and we learn of his ministry. They want to learn of his ministry and they take to establish a brand new New Testament church. All of them that followed him, they sacrificed and gave up something. Listen, y'all remember Matthew? As you recall, he was sitting at work 
at a tax collector's table and Jesus called him and said, follow me. And Matthew got up and left that table. He sacrificed his occupation and he began to follow this young man from Galilee. Listen, everybody at the table made a sacrifice. You were Peter, James, and John, and Andrew. They were fishing with their father's boat. When Jesus walked by the seashore and said, come and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And the Bible says that they did not get no hugs and kisses from the family. They didn't kiss them goodbye, but they left their family in the boat and they left. And they went and followed Jesus. They left everything. They, they had a whole family inheritance that they was going to gain, but they got up and followed this young no-name preacher. They sacrificed in order to be at the table. We find out that each of these disciples gave up something so that they might sit at the Lord's table. Then we also understand even the one that is giving out the Lord's supper made the ultimate sacrifice of them all. For, for we're taught that, uh, that even before the foundation of the world, God had a plan. And the text tells us that one day God sent his only begotten son into the form of humankind. He came in flesh. John 1 tells us that the word itself became flesh and dwelt among us. And so Jesus made the sacrifice to leave the right hand of the Father to put on flesh of humanity and to walk around for 33 and a half years and now he sits at a table where sacrifice is required. Listen, what, what does he do? What does he do? He describes to them the sacrifice that shall be made. He says to them in verse 15, he says, I have desired, I have longed to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. In other words, Jesus says, I wanted us to sit down and eat before I make the ultimate sacrifice of my life. And what does he do? He demonstrates the sacrifice right there at the table. He takes the cup, he blesses it, passes it to them and says, divide it amongst yourself and we won't do this again until the kingdom comes. Then he tastes the bread of unleavened. And I want us to remember that, that the reason why he used an unleavened bread is because it was to remind the people of their journey out of Exodus. They, they are to remember that when God told them to take up, take the blood of the lamb, put it over their doorpost, he says, you need to be in a hurry. So, so we ain't got time to put yeast all in the bread for it to rise and do all of that. He says, but I want you to make it without leaven. I want you to eat it, but, but, but know that it's the bitterness of the bread that he wants it to remind them where they came from. So Jesus takes the bread and the symbolism that it comes with it, he transformed the meaning and says, take this bread for this is my body. In other words, Jesus says, we all have to sacrifice at the table, but none of you will sacrifice like I'm about to take place, what I'm about to do. But I want you to remember he says, I want you to remember my sacrifice. I want you to remember how, by, by every time you eat of this bread and you take of it, I want you to think about my body that I will lay as a sacrifice on Calvary's cross. And so Jesus takes this bread of bitterness, takes this bread of haste, and says, I want you to think about my body which has been given for you. And not only does he take the bread and remind them of his body, but he says, take this cup. As you drink the wine, this is the New Testament. This is the covenant, not just to remember the bitterness of the Exodus journey, but I want you to think about the blood that I'm going to shed for you. Every time you drink from this cup, I want you to remember us doing this at this table. And, 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 and it's our custom. It's our custom on the first Sunday that when we come together at the Lord's table, listen, I hope and pray that you will make the sacrifice. Tonight,
not be distracted by anything else, to try not to multitask, try not to be on the phone, try not to be doing anything else, but think about the sacrifice that it requires to sit at the table. Think about the sacrifice Jesus made to sit at the table. Every time you take that wafer and you place it in your mouth, every time you take that cup and you drink of it, think of the Savior, our Messiah, who hung on the cross, bled and died. Listen, 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 listen. We, uh, we, in, in professional, wherever you may be, we go to different meetings all the time. And I'm at meetings all the time. And, and one phrase that I hear all the time when I'm at a meeting is that, that we're sitting is and we're trying to make decisions. Somebody always says, before we make a decision, let's think about who's not at the table. And, and you know, I, I understand the meaning behind that, that they want to make sure that everybody is represented. They want to make sure that a decision is not just made with those who have had stake in it and those who had just had a chance to talk, but, but they want to think about those that even don't. But you know, I begin to understand that it takes sacrifice to sit at the table. And listen, I don't know about y'all, but every time I'm sitting at a table in a meeting and we're trying to figure out some things that work, I'm sacrificing doing something else that I can be doing. I don't know about y'all, but every, every time you're on a Zoom meeting, you probably think, I could be doing something else right now. Every time you turn around, somebody has a Zoom meeting, wants to come to a meeting, and you sacrificing your time sitting at the table because there's a great possibility you could be doing something else. But look, Luke reminds us, he says, time you sit at the table, it requires sacrifice. And here it is that Jesus identifies sacrifice with the one he's about to give you. Lord have mercy. So at the table, it requires sacrifice. But I also want you to know that at the Lord's table, to get us at the table, it is a place for servants. It is a place for servants. There are some people, there are some folk that every time that you go out to eat, every time you get together, y'all, we're going to have this, we're going to go out to eat. They want to they, they wanna know where the head of the table is. Not like they're going to grab a meal or anything <laughs> once the meal is over. But they want to sit at the head of the table to be seen. But, but, but look at what Jesus does. Jesus, the Messiah, God in the flesh. The Bible says that he sits at the table and he does not sit waiting to be served. But yet, he serves them. And so my argument today is that if you sit at the Lord's table, it's going to cost you to become a servant. Lord have mercy. Luke does not describe it, but over in John 14, 14, 12, he tells us that when Jesus gets to the site, to the table, and one moment Jesus stands from the table, takes off his clothes, put a towel around his waist, and he begins to walk around the table and wash the disciples' feet. Now, we understand from culture that this is something that should have been done by a servant standing at the door. But since there was no servant, Jesus the Messiah, the Holy One, the one who knew no sin, the perfect one, the one who did miracles for three and a half years, he gets up from the table and he begins to serve the disciples around the table. And John records this, that, that when he gets to Peter, that spokesperson, when he gets to Peter, that he begins to wash his feet, and Peter proclaims, he said, Lord, you shall not wash my feet. You ain't washing my feet, Lord, what you doing? Jesus tells him, Peter, you don't even know what I'm doing right now. He says, but in due time, you'll understand. He says, but if I don't wash your feet, then you'll have nothing to do with me. Peter had a change of tune. 
Peter says, I'm still not understanding. I don't know what you're talking about. But don't just wash my feet. Wash my hands and my head also. Wash me all over. Jesus says, has to keep teaching him and says, Peter, those who are clean, you don't have to wash all of that. Just wash your feet from the dust as you go from the house, as you go from house to house. But he says, you need to understand that this is a scripture thing. That I'm not trying to show you. I, I'm trying to show you what it means to be a servant. And so Jesus demonstrated servanthood by sitting at the table, washing their feet. And then John says that once he gets done with washing their feet, he puts his clothes back on and they resume the supper. But here's, here Jesus goes and he continues to hand out the bread and wine and the wine and just to tell somebody, listen, I, I, I got to share this with you, that when you come to sit at the Lord's table, you have to be humble. You have to be humble. Your king court title, your queen title, your all of that title, the, your, your uppityness, whatever you have, all of that has to go away. And you must become a servant. If you want to sit at the Lord's table, you must be mindful that I'm, I'm there to do whatever the master calls me to do because I'm his servant. And what Jesus says here is the reason why we're at the table is because I'm serving my Father which is in heaven. The reason why you're at this table is because you replied to the call I gave you to follow me. And three and a half years, they have been servants of the Master. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, there's some things you must do. He says, number one, you got to deny yourself. You got to deny yourself. I get it. That's the hardest thing for us to do. That's, that's hard to deny yourself because there are moments when we, when we really try to put self out front. We really want ourselves to be out front. There are moments when self really wants to be served. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me as a disciple, you must deny yourself. And then he says, you must take up your cross. Every day, in other words, you must wake up with the mind of a servant. You must wake up and tell the Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. He says, if you're going to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross, and you must leave everything else behind. Jesus demonstrates, he tells us, he says, listen, you're sitting at the table, and it's going to require you to be a servant. As a matter of fact, text, and I didn't read this part, if you go further down, you, 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 you'll, get, you'll get to a place and Jesus says, the kings of the Gentiles do things different. They sit at the table and they exercise authority so that you may call them Lord. But he says, but we will be different. For the greatest among you is the one who becomes the least. Jesus asked the question, who is the greatest at the table? The one who is sitting, eating, or the one who serves? Jesus says, I, I, know, that, I, know, I know what you want to say. The one who's sitting at the table, but, but look at, at, at who I am. Look at what I'm doing at the table. Can I tell you that the Lord is showing us again that if we want to leave, we must lead by serving. It's not about titles, not about initials in front of your name or behind your name and what you've gone to school and did all of this, that, and the other for. It's about being a servant. Jesus says that you're going to continue on this journey and if you're going to continue to sit at this table, you must be a servant. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I promise I'm not trying to scare anybody away from the table. I'm just trying to let you know what to expect if you sit down at the table. Because when you sit down at the table, it requires sacrifice. You've got to give up something to sit at the table. You can't sit at both tables. You can't sit at God's table and then get up and go over there and sit at the world's table. It does not work that way. And I know there are some folk who are right now listening somewhere along down the street. They are trying to sit at both tables. But Jesus said, listen, you cannot do it. You can't do it. Listen, 
it's, it's the holiday seasons, right? It's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And I remember uh, going to uh, different uh, Thanksgiving gatherings, and I can remember going to different people's houses, sometimes even my own. And, 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 and if you think about it, some of you, it's happened for y'all just the same, that you had to sit at the kids' table. Y'all remember that? It, it, it wasn't no big old table. It wasn't no big, pretty wooden table that had all the stuff out. It was one of them tables that had the four legs that pop out. You know, they put up every now and again and they, no, it, it wasn't draped with nothing. It wasn't covered with the decoration. It, it, it was just one of those tables that they popped out, pulled the legs out, and they sat over in the corner. And you sat over there with all the other kids and you was eating all paper plates. While everybody else was eating off the good stuff. Y'all need to see somebody know about that. And, and, and I can remember one of the greatest things, as a matter of fact, some of y'all still, y'all y'all remember that? One of the greatest desires was saying, when I get to that big table over there, from the kiddie table to the grown-up table, they don't do that nowadays. I'm sorry, they don't do that nowadays. Nowadays, even the kids hear everything the grown-ups talk about. Lord have mercy. But, but, but there was a time when it was separate. Go on over there, grown folk talking. But I'm afraid that there are some Christians who still sitting at the kiddie table, desiring to sit at the grown table. But they don't want to pay the cost to move to sit and eat at the table with the fine child with the real silverware and sit at the grown-up table. They ain't willing to make the sacrifice that is necessary. They're not, listen, I, I, I can't give up cussing. I can't quit lying. I can't quit cheating. I can't quit doing all this other stuff that I've been doing, but, but I want to sit at that table. Listen, Lord, I'm tired of sitting at this kiddie table, but I want to sit at the big table, but I ain't serving nobody. Y'all know how you go. You, you, you know how long I worked to get this title. You know how long I, how long I went to school and put these letters behind my name. How long I done worked at this place to do that. So people ought to be willing to serve me. But Jesus says, if you're going to sit at my table, it's going to cost you something. You gotta be, you gonna have to sacrifice. And you're gonna have to serve. But then thirdly and finally, I wanna let you know the last thing that requires, that's required of you to sit at this table is self-examination takes place. Self-examination takes place. There's something about sitting at the Lord's table that makes you take inventory on who you are. There's something about sitting across from the Messiah who took on flesh of humanity, who's willing to wash their feet, that makes you examine who you are. Yeah. Now listen, y'all don't have to raise your hand, you don't have to confess, but, but I'm making a confession right now, and, and listen, I hope you don't get me in trouble when Thanksgiving comes and we get together, because, because they know that, that they might try to make me do some work, but, but, but is there anybody, anybody here that feels guilty that if you watch your family members slave for days, get up early in the morning, put stuff on the table, and then you just show up and sit down and eat. Is there, is there anybody else that, that, ever, that ever sits at the table and just feel a little bit bad that you didn't help? That, 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 that you look that, that you, that you <laughs> like somebody, there's people looking like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> but, 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 but you look and you see how tired your parents are, you see how tired your spouse is, you see how tired your family is, and you looking at them, and you trying to, and you, listen, you listen, for about 30 seconds, you look, and I, I sure wish I could have contributed. I, I wish I could have helped so they wouldn't have to be so tired. But here it is. This is self-examination. 
that is happening at the table. And Jesus talks about the body, talks about the bread, breaks it, gives thanks to them and tells them, for this is my body. Jesus takes the wine and says, this is the blood of my New Testament drinking because now you are part of me. But then the Bible says, they begin to get convicted. Because Jesus says in verse number 22, that the hand of him that shall betray me is right here at the table. Look at the examination that starts to starts to happen. Listen, I didn't share. I didn't, I didn't share because it didn't really fit my esteem word that I had going on. But 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 it, but, but, but but can I tell you that there is grace at the table? I don't know about the rest of y'all, but if I was Jesus, if I was Jesus. John says, when John says that Jesus knows everything, he knows who's at the table. He knows the plan that God has for him. And see right here, he says that the one who's going to betray me is at the table. Now, if I was Jesus, thank God I'm not. Judas would already be gone. Ain't no way to work. That I would know that you're about to sell me out. And I'm going to serve you sitting at the table. Thank God I ain't him. And thank God, listen, I, I, like Steve Harvey said, I'm still a work in progress. But I thank God for Jesus. Thank God that there's no one like him because Jesus, he, he could have kicked me away from the table a long time ago. Because although he lets me sit at the table, he already knows what I'm going to do wrong tomorrow. He already knows what I've done wrong in the past, but yet he doesn't move me from the table. And some of y'all ought to be glad that you're still sitting at the table. Because if justice and truth be told, you would have been cut off a long time ago. Jesus knows our past and he knows my future, but yet he has grace enough to let me stay at the table and dine with him. And, and, and I shouldn't be all in the building shouting for that because all of us have skeletons in the closet that only Jesus knows about. And yet he still lets us sit there. But Jesus says, him that shall betray me is right here at the table. And watch this. Self-examination begins to happen. Can you see these 12 sitting around at the table looking at each other up and down and sideways with the side eye? Is it, is it me? And because some of them are even closer to the others. No, man, it ain't you. It can't be you. I've been watching you. I know you love Jesus. Is it me, though? And then two of them began to whisper and go, it's probably him over there. You know, he missed the last meeting of the other night. We don't know where he was. It was probably that one. And they began to look around the table trying to figure out who's going to sell out the Messiah. But I need you to know that none of us are exempt. Because after they began to figure out who's going to do it, who's going who's gonna to sell out the Messiah, they commit and what I consider to be the most ultimate sin at the table. Verse 24 says, then there became strife among them, wondering who should be the greatest. I hope somebody can help me with this. Maybe somebody can help me. How do you go from, is it me? To, it is me. How do you go from, is it me that's going to betray? To, it is me that's the greatest. How do you go from, am I the one that's going to sell out Jesus? To, am I the one that's going to get to sit next to him? At the table. And listen, if you're not careful, we can go from examining ourselves to lifting ourselves. 
If we don't examine correctly, instead of looking at everything that we are asked for forgiveness for, we begin to prop ourselves up. Well, God, I know that I didn't do that. But at least I'm not like them. Lord have mercy. And the disciples began to try to fight among themselves about who should be the greatest. And listen, I'm telling you, Jesus has grace that goes beyond all imagination. Because if y'all had, if y'all had parents like this that had these moments going around, and they they they, they probably would have cleared the table out. He says, I don't know what y'all fighting about. I don't know what y'all got going on, but y'all not finna do this at my table. Get yourself up, get away from this table, go do something on down the street because this is not the behavior that we demonstrate. But watch this, Jesus lets them remain. Even though they began to talk about which one of them should be the great. Listen, I, I feel like that every now and again when we start to act up that crazy, I, I just, I believe God has a sense of humor. And I believe that every now and again, God will give us enough room to hang ourselves. Well, I'm going to see how far this child goes. They're just going to get on out there and just go act fool. Give us enough just to hang ourselves. Now, what I found out is ain't none of this new. Because watch this, two of them wanted to be the greatest. But they didn't want to do the work. Bible says, and two of them, they, 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 they was trying to do what's necessary. They was trying to move forward, trying to do what's necessary. You remember this story uh, uh, when, 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 when two said they wanted to do this, but then their mama came in and tried to help them out. Bible says that the mother came in and took Jesus to the side and said, say, hey, hey, listen, can I holler at you for a second? He said, them two boys over there, you know, them two, uh, them, them over there. And, and they've been, them, them, them two mine, and they've been following you faithfully. So I'm just wondering, when everything comes to the end and you get to your kingdom, is it possible? Is it possible that you can let my two babies sit on the right and on the left? That, 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 that took place too. They mama came in. Let's I'm gonna, I'm gonna help my babies. And they've been working hard for you. They've been they they've been faithful. Can you let them sit on your left and on your right? And watch this. I love what Jesus does. Jesus tells them and have and I have to tell people later on. He tells all of them and then he has to tell people later on. You can't handle the cup that I'm about to drink to sit where I sit. And so you and I have to be careful because if we sit at the Lord's table, it requires sacrifice. If you sit at the Lord's table, you have to be a servant. You have to sit there and do self-examination. You have to be able to understand, listen, if I'm sitting at this table, it's going to require some things. Listen, I, this remedy is serving is so depressing this morning. I get it. I understand. It is depressing. It's hard. No, anything that you want to do and you're trying to move forward, when you start talking about people have to put in some work, oh, you go, it's going to be quiet. We don't like working. We don't like sacrificing. We don't like obeying. We don't, we, we, but, but listen, I guarantee you, when I start to tell you what God's going to do for you, we, we jump up, we jump, we run, and we shout, oh, God, you're going to give me this, you're going to give me that. Yeah, but you got to do this. Wait a minute. Can't you just give it to me? Listen, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want to sit at the table. If I got to give up stuff. If I got to serve other people. If I gotta look inside to see who I truly am, what's the benefit of sitting at the table? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Because all of the things that happen at the table, I need you to understand and watch this, there's salvation at the table. 
in spite of my sin, in spite of my shame, in spite of my shortcoming, there is still salvation at the table. I didn't read it because it would have taken too long, but keep reading in chapter number 22, and Jesus tells them, those of you who are here with me, you have continued throughout my temptation. In other words, Jesus says, you have seen the hardship that I've been through. You've seen how folks have laughed at me, how they rebuked me. How you've seen the shortcoming and how, how everything is going to happen in the upcoming days. He says, even though you've been there, he says, I can't wait till I get a chance to appoint you, Lord have mercy, to the kingdom of God. I can't wait till I get to the Father he's appointed me. And Jesus said, is it worth it to sit at the table? Yes, it is. Because all of the suffering that you go through, all of the shame that you go through, every time that you, you, you find yourself, it can be handled right there at the table. And the day to pay off, Jesus tells them, I'm going to appoint you unto kingdoms that you might eat and drink at my table in the kingdom and actually sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So Jesus says, sit at the table and hold on. And I want to share that with us today. Better is coming. Can I tell you that if you sit at the table long enough, and you've made your sacrifice. You, you, and you've determined in your mindset that I'm going to be a servant. Listen, what you've done for yourself and you've done your self-examination, I need you to know that hold on. Because the glory of God is coming. Lord have mercy. Knowing that there's salvation at the table, when I think about what it took for Jesus to put this table together, Lord have mercy, I'm reminded and it reminds me that the glory is going to come. Listen, I told you this was a Thursday. And so Luke goes on after they get up from the table and he tells us that Judas goes and does what he must do. The Bible says they sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. They go to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus, after that, gave his riveting speech about death that is to come. He takes them to the Garden and says, won't you come and pray with me? Talking to his inner circle. Y'all know what happened there. They disappointed him. Just like us. We'll fall short. We'll, we'll, we'll fall short. And, 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 and then we'll, we'll, we'll come short. They disappointed. They kept falling asleep. Say, listen, y'all gonna go sleep. Do what you gotta do. I'm gonna talk to the Lord. But we know the rest of the story. Judas betrayed him with a kiss. And after that betrayal, the ultimate sacrifice began. Jesus went through trials, went through being beaten, flesh ripped from his body, Carried an old rugged cross, carried up Galgotha's hill, getting there, being stretched out wide, nails in his hands and in his feet, pierced in his side, even had the nerve to put a crown of thorns on. All but here's when they messed up. Here's when they messed up. They told him, you can put me, you can do all of this. He says, don't lift me up. He says, don't lift this up. They, they looked down and said, no, you don't want to lift this up because if you lift this up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so they were disobedient. They didn't listen. They lifted him up. And on that cross on Friday, you hung there. Between two thieves, hung there between two radicals, hung there and died with his mother watching and the disciples scattered. You know, gave up the ghost, laid his head in the locks of the shoulders, and gave up the ghost. But early oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sunday morning, got 
got up from a borrowed tomb. And that's why we have to understand. Because all that God has done for us by sending his son. This first Sunday stuff. It is sacred. It's something that means something. It's something that this do in remembrance of him. For the sacrifice that he Are you willing to sacrifice for? Are you willing to tell God I'm going to examine myself? Are you willing to be a servant? Listen, I want to see that the table. I want to see that the table so, so when I close my eyes, I can behold him face to face. I want to see that at the table. So that when I get to the place, I want to hear him say, Thou good and faithful servant, well done. Listen, the privilege is extended. We extend this privilege to you to come on in where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. We, we extend this privilege to you right now. What is this feast that's going on at the table? Let me tell you, 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 want, you, you, want, you want some things that's been missing in your life? Come on To where the table is spread. There's peace at this table. There's love at this table. There's healing at this table. There's restoration of mercy. At this table, come on in. Where the table is spread, the feast of the Lord is going on. This seat is not an easy seat to be in. It's a seat that requires some work. It requires us saying, God, here I am. In me. It requires us saying, not my will, but thy will be done. It requires us to be totally open to giving it all. I don't need to give it to anybody else. I don't need to give it and talk to my friends. I don't need to talk to my family. Listen, what I, I want to see that at the table. At the Lord's table. Because if I have a seat at the Lord's table, He can fix any and everything that I have to go through. Think about that as a musician plays.
that's going to come. We pray, God, 
that you meet her there. That at the end of it, Lord oh, have mercy, at the end of it, she can wake up and say, God, thank you for you kept me through it all. But then God does one who's saying, You brought me out. You've kept me when I couldn't keep myself. You held me when I didn't know which way to turn. But now, God, be a lamp unto those feet. Father, that whichever way that they may be traveling, whichever way they may be going, God, that you would keep on a straight and narrow path. Whatever traps and snares the devil may try to set up, God, we pray that you would remove them right now in the name of Jesus. That the walk can be strengthened. That peace can be given. That your presence can be felt. But then God, our faith lets us know that we can even say thank you in advance for what you're going to do. God, we pray for our church. We pray for our pastor. We pray for those who may not even come now, but still, they're calling upon your name. God, let your anointing fall fresh on us. Keep us that we may go day by day feeling your presence, feeling your strength. And then when the devil gets busy, let us be reminded of the words that you embed within our hearts that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Thank you, God, for hearing us. Thank you, God, for these who have come. Now be with them until we meet again on Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
offering, please be reminded that we are asking for monetary donations for our holiday cheer baskets that we put together each year. Uh, when the kid will be standing receiving those uh, donations, uh, I'm sorry, those gifts, those gifts, uh, when the high will be standing accepting our tithe and our offering. Thank you. 
for Wednesday went out to a lot of bottles of prayer. We don't have a lot of bottles to go to, but we do have our various homes. Just don't go home saying, who shall be the greatest? Amen. We all need to be servants and children of God. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank y'all so much for being here on today. We are in another month uh, for, uh, we are thankful. It's November already. Lord have mercy, 2022 has flown by. Let me give you an additional, a couple of additional announcements. Um, we are in election period. Amen. I, I hope that y'all early voted. I ain't going to tell you who to vote for. But I hope that you early vote. If you did not early vote, please, please exercise your civic duty uh, on the 8th and get to those polls and vote. Don't think your vote doesn't count because trust me, it does. Amen. Amen. And then let me say thank you. Uh, we got somebody in training. I think uh, he did a good job. I've been, I'm a little blurred right now, but I've been watching him. Uh, <laughs> Well, Ryan, we thank you so much. Um, uh, y'all know he, he pretty much almost like me. I started working these microphones. Y'all remember that, Lord have mercy. But yeah, it, it, I thank you so much uh, for uh, learning and feeling and helping us out on our broadcast. But well, Ryan, right, we thank you and we appreciate you for your service on today. All right. Um, Mothers, mothers, please let me meet with you uh, just for a few minutes immediately following service. I don't believe we have anything else. Uh, let's continue to keep the Glenn family in your thoughts and your prayers. Uh, the niece of Sister Horn, Mother Horn as well. Continue to keep them lifted. Uh, that God be the blessing that we know that he is. Amen? Amen. And my wife is watching, praying that she's still traveling down the road safely, taking Brayman back to school, and I'm praying for a safe return for her. Amen. Amen. All right, let's all stand. Amen.